I, I try to go outside the box if I can because and we've I've got textbooks over there in the bookshelf and we've not even opened and because this fits perfect the way we're doing and, and I've been trying to introduce more technology and the podcast is, was, was a great idea especially when she brought it up I was like yes that would be awesome I tell them up front I, I can stand here and talk all day long and I can tell you everything that I know but I still don't know if you know it so that's why I, and I like for them to talk that's probably why they're real active I want them to talk in their groups and I want them to tell me more than I tell them. Mm -hmm. Like in fifth grade, primary and secondary source both is, you know, it's covered throughout. And and like I was telling her last, I think it was last week I was at a training and they had even brought up podcasts as being a, one of those sources and so I thought I was a little laugh to brag because, you know, we're doing that next week so we're ahead <laughs> of you all. But primary source, secondary sources throughout the whole social studies. I mean, it's like, and that's what the new test standards is getting ready to switch to, is comparing, you know, the different types of sources and time together and and the, where they're getting the interview and that shows them an example primary source, that you're actually talking mm -hmm. to the person mm -hmm. who's telling you the story or telling you what there is instead of you telling, well, I talked to Mr. Davidson and he said, which is secondary. Mm -hmm. and so this has been, you know, the perfect tie-in to that, I thought. So do you think there is value in having outside resources and artists and stuff that can come into the I school? Do, I do. That way they can see, I mean, you know, like earlier I, I tried to tell them we were doing a podcast, or I go, well, what is the podcast? And I could explain them a little bit, but when you bring someone else in, I mean, like, Miss Tammy, or she, I mean, she explained it uh, at their level, too, to where they, they understand it. And some of the kids, you know, they may struggle at, and stuff, but even the ones that you might see struggling every day, I think they're the ones that they're getting it through. And that's what's important, you know, because, you know, you don't want them to be left out. But they were focused more on the, the gathering and the content. How do you ask quality questions? How do you... Um, how do you respectfully engage, you know, with people? How do you, you know, kind of set your boundaries for, for making a quiet space? Um, all of that, I think, really dovetailed nicely with the social studies aspect of it because then they were able to um, use technology in a way that was very content driven. If anybody wants to include this in your outro, if you're going to make an outro, you don't have to. So this is part of the Perry Promise Neighborhood Project. So if you want to make an outro and give a little shout out, we're in Mr. Davidson's homeroom at West Perry Elementary. And this was produced as part of the Perry Promise Neighborhood. I think that would be a great outro. Okay? All right, so this group, I'm going to take you to go before your intro. Okay, and then. Do you want to say we are the Turtles media team or just the Turtles? Media team. Okay, so just write that down right there. And then that could be the one sentence. And then the second sentence. So you could pick like who wants to do the first one, who the, does the second one. Hello, this is the Turtles Media Team. And we are here interviewing Miss Davis, our amazing art teacher from West Perry Elementary. I think that sounded really good. We'll listen to it and see what we think. We've been working on a podcast and we're doing it on art. Um, I, I think everybody could just choose what they want to. Okay. And we chose to interview Miss Davis, our art teacher. And why did you decide that you wanted to interview her? She's Since the art teacher and she likes to hang up uh, paintings. That, that felt good to ask her some questions about art, to learn about a little bit more about her and the stuff she does. What did you and discover about her? That her first painting was okay. in kindergarten and that she hangs up the kids' art pieces because people compliment them and people brag on them a lot. Is painting what you do most of the time or 
Are there other um, things? Drawing and cutting, gluing, primary colors, secondary colors, traditions like painting traditions like the Day of the Dead. And why do you think that's important to have art? It just lets us relieve stress and lets us paint. So to learn some stuff about your teachers, I think is pretty cool. What do you think is the value of that? Why is it important to see your teachers as people? Because you can understand them more and understand what they're going through more. Like if they're having a rough time and you know about it, you can probably relate to it or something close to it. My name is Heather Woods. I teach fifth grade writing and science. And your students have been involved in a special project this week. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, their social studies class, they had a special visitor that has came into our school to teach them how to record a podcast and they are super excited about that. They were really proud of the questions that they formed and being able to speak in a professional manner um, and interview staff within the school. They were very proud of themselves. I believe one of the groups interviewed you, didn't they? They did. What was, what was that experience like? Um, it was actually three young men and um, they were very professional. Their questions were very appropriate and informative. They, they were very pleased with themselves as I was when they were finished. What do you think that they learned about reading and writing and other textual kind of materials? Their questions were very appropriate. They uh, interviewed different people within the school, teachers, and then staff like our cafeteria staff, our nursing staff, our office staff, and the questions that I've seen and the kids that I've talked to, it really matched who they interviewed. So it was really appropriate and they, they found that voice in their writing and that appropriate voice and audience when they were creating and formulating the questions. Do you enjoy making podcasts? Yeah, I like interviewing and talking about what other students like. Okay, so getting the opportunity to learn more about other students was... Yeah, interesting. And what did you learn about, about interviewing and recording? That you can always start over, and like, if you mess up. What are you yeah. doing podcasts about? Uh, making like interviews about students in West Perry. And who did you interview? Nico Fugit. And she is? An art student, really good at art. Oh, okay, and what did you find out? <clears throat> that she, she makes, she, her art is about what she dreams about and what she thinks about and how like, she just plans it. And the reason she's an art student is because her dad was a tattoo artist when he was, right, right now, that's why she wants to do art. We got to learn the definition of primary and secondary sources. And what is the definition of that? Primary is like the original, the main purpose. Secondary is like edited and not original. We got um, my mom scraping Scooping out mashed potatoes. We got them <laughs> making bags and we got the refrigerator. Yeah, I don't like the like scraping. Like when she started mixing it and started... I don't like that. I like that sound. So it made you feel happy because? Because we get to eat here and we're not going hungry and I like how they fix, like fix the food. And the food's good. Yeah, it is. Were you surprised that what they think about is making sure that kids aren't hungry? Yeah. They care about us and they like feeding us. Have you enjoyed this? Yes. yes. Mr. Johnson about his career. 
We heard outside of school you play banjo. Why? Well, my dad was a musician. He got me started at a really young age. And it's just always been something I'm, I've been into because it's uh, where we live. We live in Appalachia, so it's something that's really big in this area. Uh, it's where we live in the bluegrass state. So it's the state music of Kentucky is bluegrass music. The father of bluegrass music, Bill Monroe, is from Kentucky. So I've just always been into our heritage and stuff like that. So that's why I've really stuck with banjo and guitar, mandolin, bass, and played all kinds of different instruments. Could you tell us about the band and instruments you play? Yeah, like I mentioned before, I play the banjo, I play the guitar, mandolin, and the bass. I've played the guitar more than anything else in a band. Um, I've played in a couple of different bands, and and I've also played mandolin in a band before, and bass and banjo, all, all four instruments that I play, I've played in a band before. Um, but right now I play guitar in a couple of different bands. I play in a bluegrass gospel band called Sanctified, and I play in a bluegrass band called Mountain Melody. This is the Avengers, Jaden, Micah, Ashley, and Chloe. And a big thanks to Mr. Johnson for letting us interview him.